Subscribe, hit that bell icon and share this clip if you enjoy it. This is TRS Clips. So what is your CTA to the average everyday person? So my call to action for anybody who's listening to this would be something which is non-technical. And I'll explain why I say that. I think it's a psychological shift that you have to make when you go on the internet. We do a lot of things on the internet, any action on the internet, with certain assumptions which are not right. When we see a call which says on the top end-to-end -end encrypted, we think there's nobody who can listen into that. When we write an email to a particular recipient, we think nobody can read that. When we go to our inbox on Instagram and write a message to somebody, we think nobody can read that. All of that's wrong. Start by thinking anything that you do on the internet, on your cell phone, on your laptop, on your Oculus, the new VR world that we should we will talk about. All of that, assume it's public. Mm. The moment you start with that, you are a very different human being on the internet. You're a different human being who's using technology. And I've seen that being the fundamental problem with most people. Because they think, and I'll give you an example, right? Because of course, so many people come to me when their Instagrams are hacked or Facebook is hacked. You know this. One of the simplest thing that Instagram does, which I think is a great feature, if your account is hacked for say three days, and there are people who hacked your account, writing mails or writing messages to say 500 you know, accounts around the world. Do you know this? In one click, all of those messages will disappear. In one click of Instagram. That's how they've designed it. And it's a great feature because it stops the spread of, you know, bad messages and nasty messages. Because unfortunately, when accounts get hacked, there's a lot of nasty stuff that gets posted, not just publicly, but even privately to your contact list, etc., etc. Now imagine this. There are people who are actually sitting in Instagram, which have a 24-7 access to every message that you write. This was a very not so comfortable press conference which happened with Uber many, many years back. This is when they had their ex-CEO, uh, uh, Travis, and... Uh, a lot of bashing of Uber, this was pre-IPO days, mm. and a lot of bashing of Uber was going on in a room where people were like, hey, you know what, the culture is not good, you got to be more respectful of, you know, the, the work that people are doing and the company needs to be more transparent, etc., etc. And it was an evening dinner with people having drinks, people having food, and one of the vice presidents, a very senior person at Uber, bangs the table and stands up and says, guys, enough of this. And this is a room full of, a table full of journalists with some of the top publications. He says, enough. Keep this in mind that all of you have an app called Uber on your phone. And I know exactly where you guys go in your evenings. So mm. don't talk about transparency. Don't talk about candor. Because I don't think you guys are practicing that in your own life. Mm. Can you imagine at how many levels that's wrong? Mm. And the problem is when you download an app, you don't realize what the app's doing to your phone. What the app, so your phone, even when it doesn't take any permission, so you know, apps take permissions, we all know that, I hope we all know that. And you generally say, okay, okay, which is not required anymore. You can actually give permissions for limited time, right? Of course, Uber will not work if you don't give it the permission to access your location, which is a fact. But on the other hand, it's not actually a fact. You can still enter the address <laughs> manually. But assuming, for simplicity, you want to give it the permission, but don't give it an access for 24 hours. You can go to your settings, privacy, and disable the location access mm. of Uber off your phone because it's accessing your location 24 hours. There's a documentary, I'm happy to send that to you and you can put that in your link. It actually went ahead and tracked Android. And how closely does it track you? And do you know this? Your Android phone 
and also your iPhone now can track with more than 98% accuracy when are you sitting, when are you standing, when are you driving, when are you walking, when are you shitting, all of that stuff. Mm. And you know why? It's not because of the permissions that you know about. It's not about, oh, can I see your camera? Can I see your pictures? And you disable some of that and you feel safe. There is no permission for your accelerometer, for your, for your gyroscope, for your proximity sensors. These are all sensors within your phone. Mm. So when you pick up the phone and you keep it in your pocket and slide it in your pocket, basically these sensors know that the phone is sliding in a particular velocity in a particular angle and it knows the height at which it's at and if you combine that data together it's actually possible to accurately predict the exact activity that you're doing mm. now imagine this if you're somebody who likes running every day or who likes to go ahead and uh, you know do a go to a particular restaurant and you're sitting for food a lot of time I'm starting to profile you on who you are. And the moment I start profiling you, and I love saying this line which says, humans are not as smart as they think they are. We are actually living in a very, very large probability. If you think about an auto driver or an Uber driver, while it might be a random Uber that you take today, which you will not take tomorrow, the sum total of what money that an Uber driver or an auto driver make on an average on a daily basis is actually the same. Mm. Can you imagine how does that happen, right? Because there are enough number of people who take opportunistically an Uber that you will be taking. And you, when you do that sum to total with the people who take it regularly, you can actually come to a law of averages and you can come to say that this is what the probability will look like for a sum total mass. That's data science for you. Coming back, why I gave you that example was when you look at the whole process around uh, uh, you know, putting this together around the apps and the amount of permissions that these apps take, the permissions are only layer one. Mm. Even after the permission, there's so much that the app knows about you, that the phone knows about you, that you don't know about. So is the solution, is the call to action, take your phone, throw it in the, in, in, in the Yamuna River? The answer is no, it's not. I carry a phone, right? So it's not that. But I carry it knowing what it's tracking me. And mm. that's what creates a difference between me and 99.9% .9 of people who use the cell phone. Mm. So I know what it's tracking. I know what it's not tracking. If I don't want to be tracked, there's a lot of times that I'll just leave the phone in the room mm. and I will just be without the phone. I'll be without the laptop. We do a lot of stuff which is with the three-letter agencies mm. around the world. And out there, you know, we just leave our cell phones. We leave our laptops because there's so much which can go wrong when it comes to cell phones and laptops or anything when it comes to technology, which is beyond what you would know about. So that's my call to action, the big one around saying, start thinking that everything that you put on the internet, on your phone, on emails is already hacked. Mm. The moment you start there, your behavior changes on the internet. And then there's no question of going ahead and clicking a picture that you'll not be proud of tomorrow. Mm. Even if you're just sending it to one person, it does not matter. Mm. So that's my big call to action. Then of course, technically have two-factor authentication, keep your operating system updated, make sure that you know, you're not clicking on random links. Uh, there, there's a ton of those which we can go ahead. And if you, if you want a longer list of this, because I get this question in almost every podcast I go to, I, we actually created a free of cost app and if that's of any interest, your people can download it. It's called Safe Me. It actually has more than 100 three-minute videos in English and in Hindi. It's got like 100,000 downloads, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which basically goes ahead and gives you how to secure your WhatsApp, mm. how to secure your Facebook, and what are the five tips to secure your Facebook account in the right way. And then it has a quiz. So you can take the quiz. It has some question. If you do that, it gives you a score of how secured you are. So, I mean, that's a longer technical list if somebody's interested, but I would say the number one, the more important one is really using the internet thinking that everything's hacked.